Warning. The subject of this film you are about to watch reveals a crucial secret of your life. You should watch it very attentively, for it concerns a subject that is liable to make fundamental changes in your outlook on the material world. The content of this film is not just a different approach or a philosophical thought. It is a fact which is also proven by science today. Man is conditioned right from the beginning of his life that the world he lives in has an absolute material reality. So he grows up under the effect of this conditioning and builds his entire life on this viewpoint. The findings of modern science, however, have revealed a completely different and significant reality than what is presumed. All the information that we have about the external world is conveyed to us by our five senses. The world we know of consists of what our eyes see, our ears hear, our noses smell, our tongues taste, and our hands feel. Man is dependent on only those five senses since birth. That is why he knows the external world only the way it is presented by these senses. Yet, scientific research carried out on our senses has revealed very different facts about what we call external world. And these facts have brought to light a very important secret about matter which makes up the external world. Contemporary thinker Frederick Vester explains the point that science has reached on this subject. Statements of some scientists posing that man is an image, everything experienced is temporary and deceptive, and this universe is a shadow, seems to be proven by science in our day. In order to better grasp this secret behind matter, let us be reminded of our information about our sense of sight which provides us with the most extensive information about the external world. The act of seeing is realized progressively. At the instance of seeing, Light clusters called photons travel from the object to the eye and pass through the eye lens where they are refracted and focus on the retina at the back of the eye. Here, rays are turned into electrical signals and then transmitted by neurons to the center of vision at the back of the brain. The act of seeing actually takes place in this center in the brain. All the images we view in our lives and all the events we experience are actually experienced in this tiny and dark place. Both the film you are now watching and the boundless landscape you see when you gaze at the horizon actually fit into this place of a few cubic centimeters. Now, let us reconsider this information more carefully. When we say we see, we actually see the effect the rays reaching our eyes form in our brain by being converted into electric signals. When we say we see, 
we actually observe the electrical signals in our brain. By the way, there is another point that has to be kept in mind. The brain is sealed to light, and its interior is absolutely dark. Therefore, it is never possible for the brain to contact with light itself. We can explain this interesting situation with an example. Let us suppose that in front of us there is a burning candle, and we view its light. During this period, when we view the candle's light, the inside of our skull and our brain are in absolute darkness. The light of the candle never illuminates our brain and our center of vision. However, we watch a colorful and bright world inside our dark brain. The same situation applies to all our other senses. Sound, touch, taste, and smell are all perceived in the brain as electrical signals. Therefore, our brains throughout our lives do not confront the original of the matter existing outside us, but rather an electrical copy of it formed inside our brain. It is at this point that we are misled by assuming these copies are instances of real matter outside us. These physical facts make us come to an indisputable conclusion. Everything we see, touch, hear, and perceive is matter. The world, or the universe, is only electrical signals in our brain. For instance, we see a bird in the external world. In reality, this bird is not in the external world, but in our brain. The light particles reflecting from the bird reach our eye, and there they are converted into electrical signals. These signals are transmitted by neurons to the center of vision in the brain. The bird we see is, in fact, the electric signals in our brain. If the sight nerves traveling to the brain were disconnected, the image of the bird would suddenly disappear. In the same manner, the bird sounds we hear are also in our brain. If the nerve traveling from the ear to the brain was disconnected, there would be no sound left. Put simply, the bird, the shape of which we see and the sound of which we hear, is nothing but the brain's interpretation of electrical signals. Another point to be considered here is the sense of distance. For example, the distance between you and this screen is nothing but a feeling of space formed in your brain. Also, objects that seem to be very distant in one person's view are actually images clustered at one spot in the brain. For instance, Someone who watches the stars in the sky assumes that they are millions of light years away from him. Yet the stars are right inside himself and the center of vision of his brain. While you watch this film, you are in truth not inside the room you assume yourself to be in. On the contrary, the room is inside you. Your seeing your body makes you think that you are inside of it. However, you must remember that your body too is an image formed inside your brain. So far, we have been speaking repeatedly of an external world and a world of perceptions formed in our brain the latter of which is what we see. However, since we can never actually reach the external world, 
how can we be sure that such a world really exists? Definitely we cannot. The only reality we cope with is the world of perceptions we live within our minds. To imagine matter to have an existence outside the mind is indeed a deception. The perceptions we observe may well be coming from an artificial source. It is possible to see this in the mind's eye by an example. First, let us suppose that we could take our brain out of our body and keep it alive in a glass jar. Let us put a computer in which all kinds of information can be recorded. Finally, let us transmit the electrical signals of all the data related to a setting, such as image, sound and smell, to this computer. Let us connect this computer to the sensory centers in our brain with electrodes and send the pre-recorded data to our brain. As our brain perceives these signals, it will see and live the setting correlated with these. From this computer, we can send to our brain also signals pertaining to our own image. For instance, we can send to our brain the electrical correlates of such senses as sight, hearing and touch that we perceive while we sit at a desk. In that state, our brain would think itself as a businessman sitting in his office. This imaginary world would continue as long as the stimulations keep coming from the computer. we would never realize that we only consist of a brain. It is indeed very easy for us to be deceived into believing perceptions without any material correlates to be real. This is just what happens in our dreams. For you, reality is all that can be touched with the hand and seen with the eye. In your dreams, you can also touch with your hand and see with your eye. But in reality, you have neither hand nor eye, nor is there anything that can be touched or seen. Taking what you perceive in your dream to be material realities, you are simply deceived. For example, a person deeply asleep in his bed may see himself in an entirely different world in his dream. He may dream that he is a pilot and command a giant airplane, and even spend a great effort to command the plane. In fact, this person has not taken even one step away from his bed. In his dreams, he may visit different settings and meet with friends have a chat with them, eat and drink together. It is only when the person awakes from his dream that he realizes all were only perceptions. If we are able to live easily in an unreal world during our dreams, the same thing can equally be true for the world we live in. When we wake up from a dream, there is no logical reason for not thinking that we have entered a longer dream that we call real life. The reason we consider our dream to be fancy and the world is real is nothing but a product of our habits and prejudices. This suggests that we may well be awoken from the life on earth which we think we are living right now just as we are awoken from a dream.
After all these physical facts arises the question of primary importance. If all physical events that we know are intrinsically perceptions, what about our brain? Since our brain is a matter just like our arms, legs, or any other object, it also must be a perception just like all other objects. An example will illuminate the subject further. Let us think that we extend the nerves reaching our brain and put it outside our head, where we can see it with our eyes. In this case, we would be able to see also our brain and touch it with our fingers. This way, we can understand that our brain is also nothing but a perception formed by the senses of vision and touch. Then, what is the will that sees, hears, and perceives all other senses if it is not the brain? Who is it that sees, hears, touches, and perceives the taste and smell? Who is this being that thinks, reasons, has feelings, and moreover that says, I am me? One of the important thinkers of our age, Carl Prebram, also poses the same question. Since the Greeks, philosophers have been thinking about the ghost in the machine, the small man within the small man, etc. Where is I, the person who uses his brain? Who is it that realizes the act of knowing? As St. Francis of Assisi said, what we search for is the one that sees. In fact, this metaphysical being that uses the brain, that sees and feels, is the soul. What we call the material world is the aggregate of perceptions viewed and felt by this soul. Just as the bodies we possess and the material world we see in our dreams have no physical reality, the universe we occupy and the bodies we possess now also have no physical reality. The real absolute being is the soul. Matter consists merely of perceptions viewed by the soul. Yes, even if we start with the presupposition that matter is real, the laws of physics, chemistry, and biology all lead us to the fact that matter consists of an illusion and to the inevitable actuality of a metaphysical matter. This is the secret beyond matter. This fact is so definite that it alarms some materialist scientists who think matter to be the absolute being. Science writer Lincoln Barnett says in his book, The Universe and Einstein, along with philosopher's reduction of all objective reality to a shadow world of perceptions, scientists have become aware of the alarming limitations of man's senses. All these facts bring us face to face with a very significant question. If the thing we acknowledge to be the material world is merely comprised of perceptions given to our soul, then what is the source of these perceptions? In answering this question, we must consider the fact that matter does not have a self-governing existence by itself, but is a perception. Therefore, this perception must have been caused by another power, which means that it must have been created. Moreover, this creation must be continuous. If there were not a continuous and consistent creation, then what we call matter would disappear and be lost. This may be likened to a television on which a picture is displayed as long as the signal continues to be broadcast. If the broadcast stops, the image on the screen will also disappear. So, who makes our soul see the earth, people, plants, our bodies, and all else that we see? It is very evident that there is a superior creator who has created the entire material universe. That is, 
the sum of all perceptions, and continues his creation ceaselessly. Since this creator displays such a magnificent creation, he surely has eternal power and might. All the perceptions he creates are dependent on his will, and he dominates everything he has created at any moment. The content of this video will deal with facts, which is proven by science today. However, some facts are purposely kept away from the public educational arena and mainstream science. Some facts must also be searched for at a deeper, higher level. Some are also found in the mystery school teachings, secret societies, and religions. These facts, however, are mixed in the guise of philosophical and theological thoughts, which are also mixed in with half-truths and fiction. The Holographic Universe, its All Illusion Parts 3, 4, and 5, will try to separate these into facts at a light level of understanding, but will still remain unbelievable to most people who are programmed through religion, public education, and the mainstream media to simply dismiss this as conspiracy theories and science fiction. I have found that at the very heart and core of all these secret societies lurks the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the ancient Jewish mysticism. It is a method of encoding information through a system of mathematics and numbers. It is some of the most ancient knowledge that man has ever possessed and has been kept secret and given only to those who have proven themselves worthy through the process of initiation. Nobody knows where it comes from. I can tell you this, it was there long before the Jews came along. The Jews just took it and preserved it and they passed it down and it's used by everybody because it's at the heart and core of the secret knowledge, the metaphysics, the real science that none of us know anything about. These people that belong to the secret societies never dared to write down in any language what they knew, what it was that they were guarding, because then someone could steal it and then the secret would be out. So they devised secret systems of encoding the secrets of the ages, the knowledge, the hidden knowledge, the occult. Now occult doesn't mean evil, it doesn't mean the devil, it doesn't mean Satan, occult means hidden means hidden, that's all it means. So they took this knowledge and they made it occult through a system of encoding encryption, one of which is mathematics, numbers. Another is architecture. Everybody wonder why do they have a fraternal organization called the Freemasons? Aren't those the guys that build walls? You bet they do. But every wall they build contains the secrets that have been kept and maintained throughout the ages and it's encoded in the architecture and in the measurements of the buildings and in the mathematical form formulas used to derive the geometry, the shape, the length and breadth and height of rooms, all encoded there. Called Holy Grail is actually a set of higher magical teachings. It is not an object, but a piece of information. Utterly Kabbalistic in its origin, the Holy Grail is the highest Kabbalistic secret. That is, that physical matter can be transformed molecule by molecule 
by the use of incantations of ancient Hebrew letters and numbers, and that the nature of reality is really an illusion. of space as empty and matter as solid. But in fact, there is essentially nothing to matter whatsoever. It's completely insubstantial. Take a look at an atom. We think of it as a kind of hard ball. Then we say, oh, well, no, not really. It's this little tiny point of, of really dense matter right at the center, surrounded by a kind of fluffy probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. But then it turns out that that's not even right, even the probability cloud of electrons popping in and out of existence. But then it turns out that that's not even right, even, even the nucleus, which we think of as so dense, pops in and out of existence just as readily as the electrons do. The most solid thing you can say about all this insubstantial matter is that it's more like a thought. It's like a concentrated bit of information. Our bodies look solid, but they are not. Under a microscope, you will see a mass of energy vibrating. Everything is energy. Because our bodies are a hologram. The secret technology of matter transfer works by breaking down the molecular structure and reassembling it back at any given place. Are there fields of awareness in the fabric of space itself? Is there consciousness beyond the physical? Is this the secret to enlightenment and can scientists verify that the field of awareness actually exists and pre-existed the Big Bang. The human aura is our very own glowing, living energy field that extends beyond our physical boundaries. While invisible to most humans, it is a light extension of our soul. Our biophotons transmit our consciousness and information, just like voices and TV pictures are transmitted on radio and microwaves. The information in our aura can actually be captured and stored in a computer. Now we can actually measure the amplitude, balance, and integration of radiant energy radiating from all seven human energy centers.
atoms are talking to each other and exchanging information all the time. For thousands of years, spiritual information was kept secret. Priests and priestesses of various religions or cults would give their lives to keep the rest of the world from knowing about their secrets and spiritual knowledge, making sure it remained secret. All the various spiritual groups and religions around the world had their secret information. Then suddenly, in the mid-60s, the veil of secrecy was lifted. In unison, almost all the spiritual groups of the world opened their archives at the same moment in history, and information that had been sealed and guarded for thousands of years became suddenly available. For a long time, astronomers pretty much thought that what you saw out there was it. If you could see it, it was there. They were either totally oblivious to the invisible side of reality, or they didn't feel it was that important. But the invisible side of our reality is actually much greater than the visible side, and probably more important. The visible part of reality is far less than 1% of the total, almost nothing. The invisible universe is really our true home. There is much, much more. There are things even beyond the electromagnetic spectrum that we are just beginning to answer. The answer lies in the fact that the computer is made out of silicon and we are made out of carbon. It is tied into the relationship of silicon and carbon. Everything in our world is a waveform, sometimes called pattern or sine wave signature, or could even be seen as sound. All things, like our bodies, planets, the universe, absolutely everything, are waveforms. The dimensional levels are nothing but differing base rate wavelengths. The only difference between this dimension and any other is the length of its basic waveform. It's just like a television or radio set. When you turn the dial, you pick up a different wavelength. Then you get a different image on your TV screen, or a different station on your radio. It's exactly the same for dimensional levels. If you were to change the wavelength of your consciousness, and in so doing change all your body patterns to a wavelength different from this universe, you would literally disappear out of this world, and reappear in the one to which you were tuned. Every object in this universe produces a sound according to its construction. Each object makes a unique sound. If you average the sounds of all the objects in this universe, in this third dimension, you would get this 7.23 centimeter wavelength, and it would be the true sound of OM for this dimension. It was Bell Laboratories that discovered this wavelength, not some spiritual person sitting in a cave somewhere. 
As you go up into dimensional levels, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter, with higher and higher energy. As you go down in dimensional levels, the wavelength gets longer and longer, with lower and lower energy, the more densely. Just as with a piano, there's a space between the notes, so that when you hit one note, there's a very definite place where the next note is. In this waveform universe we exist in, there is a very definite place where the next dimensional level exists. It's a specific wavelength relative to this one. Most cultures in the cosmos have this basic understanding of the universe, and they know how to move between dimensions. If we show each note in the chromatic scale as a circle, we have 13 circles. Each circle represents a white or black key, and the shaded circle at the end would be the 13th note that begins the next octave. The black circle on this illustration represents the third dimension, our known universe, and the fourth circle, the fourth dimension. The 12 major overtones between any two notes or dimensions are a replica of the larger pattern. It is holographic. If you carry it further, between each overtone you'll find another 12 overtones that replicate the whole pattern. It goes down and up, literally forever. This is called a geometric progression only in harmonics. If you continue to study it, you will find that each of the unique musical scales that have been discovered produces a different octave of experience. If you continue to study it, you will find that each of the unique musical scales that have been discovered produces a different octave of experience, more universes to explore. There are 12 major dimensions and 132 minor dimensions within each octave, though in truth, the progression goes on forever. This diagram represents one octave. The thirteenth note repeats, then there's another octave above that one. There's an octave of universes below this, and an octave above, and it stretches on, theoretically, forever. So, as big and as infinite as this universe seems, which is just an illusion anyway, there are still an infinite number of other ways to express the one reality, and each dimension is experimentally completely different from any other. Between each whole node universe and between each subspace or overtone universe, there is nothing, no thing, absolutely zip. Each of these spaces is called a void. The void between each dimension is called the duat by Egyptians or the bardo by Tibetans. Each time you pass from one dimension or overtone into the next, you pass through a void or blackness that's in between. But certain voids are blacker than others, and the blackest of these exist between the octaves. They are more powerful than the voids that exist within an octave. Please understand that we are using words that cannot fully explain this concept. This void that exists between octaves can be called the Great Void. It's like a wall you have to pass through to get to a higher octave. The great architect and geometrician of the Matrix Universe put these voids there in a particular way for certain reasons that will soon become apparent. All of these dimensions are superimposed over each other, and every point in space-time contains them all. The doorway to any of them is anywhere. This star tetrahedron, with Leonardo's image behind it, is going to become one of the most important drawings for this work. What you're looking at is two-dimensional, but think of it in three dimensions. A star tetrahedron, just as shown here, happens to exist around each human body. As Richard Hoagland has shown the United Nations and NASA, we're now beginning to scientifically rediscover this field. Just as it is shown around Leonardo, it is also around planets, suns, and even larger bodies.
Quantum mechanics is a set of principles describing physical reality at the atomic level of matter and at the subatomic level. Unlike other physical theories, quantum mechanics was not the invention of one or two scientists. Those who took part are called the Founding Fathers, but some of these discoveries were well known for thousands of years by the ruling elite. Quantum physics has now shown us that the person performing the experiment influences the outcome. In other words, consciousness can change the outcome of an experiment, depending on its belief patterns. There are also other aspects of ourselves we hold true that may not be true at all. The pineal gland is one of the glands of the endocrine system. This gland looks like an eye, and in some respects it is literally an eyeball. It is round and has an opening on one portion. In that opening is a lens for focusing light. It is hollow and has color receptors inside. Like a cell phone, it has a built-in wireless transmitter. The third eye allows communications with other realms of light. It also allows access to higher dimensions and higher astral realms. The ancient Egyptians understood dimensions, harmonics and the waveform universe. Temples and chambers were built by the ancient brotherhoods in order to amplify the sounds, lights and frequencies to manipulate the vibratory resonance within the temples.
The all-seeing eye pictured in the pyramid and the one dollar bill is not the eye of the devil or Lucifer as mainstream corporate religions would have us believe. Nothing could be further from the truth. The all-seeing eye is actually the pineal gland. By the age of 12, the pineal gland is now the size of a dry pea, from not only a lack of use, but from a more sinister dark side at work. Proven scientific studies show fluoride added to drinking water not only cause havoc to the pineal gland, but also crystallizes it. Vaccinations, MSG and food coloring, preservatives and additives also play havoc upon it. To awaken the pineal gland just a fraction, these are the things that must be eliminated from your diet. Also very important, you must switch off your TV and radio for at least a year. Last Where does she get her view of the world? Shotgun, 14 people are dead, including three Who will be her role models? Never been a better time to what values will she have? Whose child is she? Yours or the network's? Back your children. Turn off the TV. Is the meaning of this. And this is a very mysterious symbol, which, uh, you know, you've heard all sorts of explanations for it, but I'm going to give you the the Masonic Illuminati inner meaning of what this means tonight. And it's going to probably gross you out and astonish you, and I apologize in advance for that. But this is what it means. This is the eye of Lucifer. But believe it or not, it corresponds to a human organ that for lack of a more delicate term we'll call the rectum. <laughs> By awakening the pineal gland, you can speed up your learning and memory abilities and enhance your intuition, wisdom, creativity, sharpen your awareness, trigger your psychic abilities and experience bliss. People will turn around and notice you in a room, even notice you in a crowded hall. You'll see through the lies and the propaganda. You'll no longer wish to view television or radio as you will see through the lies and manipulation you will see that you are being entertained and spoken to at kindergarten level. The radio will seem like unbearable idle chatter. You will see through everything and you will go, wow, have I just woken up from a coma? <laughs> <laughs> 